Hey guys, what's up? Techhub is here again. Um, in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to make a GUI calculator application using Java. So, this is what you're going to be learning today. Um, this is a calculator right here. But this calculator, we're going to be using panels to make this calculator and a couple of layout managers to make this so you can see that when you um, maximize you can still see that the components are intact they are well aligned but if you were to use absolute layers like this you might see that the components will be right in the center or will be structured differently so let's get on with this tutorial um, so the first thing you need to do is uh, you should import your java out import java out events import java text decimal format you're gonna be using that import java util import java swing then create your public class and implement an action listener after you're done doing that you need to declare some um, components variables so we have the j text field that's where you're where you going to enter the Values for the calculator to compute. We have a J button. This is an array which takes in four four J buttons. We have another another J button which takes in button nine, button zero, button plus, button minus, button division, button multiplication, button plus, dot clear equal. We declare our first number and second number as double. We declare a string of operation and temp we also declare fonts but you don't really need to do this just to make your GUI look sweet so now we declare a constructor here and then we declare we call the super class of the J frame so that means this is the name of the title of the J frame when it's launched we set our bounds. This is the x component. This is the y, or it is the width and the height, or the height and the width, one of them. And then we set our default default close operation to exit on close, so that when the user clicks on the close button, it just it doesn't dispose. It just exits. And then we call our GUI, which I, I'm now going to get there. We set our visible to true, so that it shows when the application is launched. So now we write about six functions for our panels. We have the first panel to be panel one. So in panel one, we are going to declare our text field. That's what you saw right there. So this text field is in one panel. So we declare our text field. And then um, we give it a size of 13, we set the fonts, we set the horizontal alignment to be string constant on the right, and then we add it to our panel. So you can see P text or add text. And then we return our panel. The next panel we do is panel two. For panel two, we are using a grid layout because we have four buttons, one, two, three, and four. So you can see we have this is the row, we have one row. So this is the one row and then we have four columns so one two three four so four columns so one row four columns and this is for the vertical alignment so no we, we have the top and the bottom alignment this is for the left and right alignment so we can see that we have so i said left and right alignment to be 10 and then setting the top and bottom to be zero. It's zero, but then we are going to make a change down there in the program. Um, we, we then use a for loop to place the text values into our hold on guys. We then use a for loop to place our text values into the J buttons. So you can see here my button I equals a new j button and then i plus one 
So the first year bus is going to be one, the second is going to be two, the third is going to be three, the fourth is going to be four. And then we set a font and then we add btn one dot add. So we add it to our panel and then we set the action command to be the text inside the buttons. And then we add the action is now. So we do the same thing for panel three. As you can see here, nothing different here. We move to panel four. We have a grid a grid layout here. But this time this time around we um, initialize our J buttons individually. So we have um, J button which has button nine and then we set the font button zero, set the font button plus, set the font button minus set the font and then we add all to our panel. Then we set the action commands for the various buttons and action listeners for the various buttons. So we do the same thing to panel five. We have division, we have multiplication, we have plus and minus, we have dot. So we do the same thing. We have the action command as division, multiplication, plus and minus. Set the action listeners. For panel five, a panel of six actually, we have the clear button and equal to button. So we do the same for this also. We put the layout, then we retain the panel. So now this is our main method where we are going to initialize. We are going to call all the panels we set up at the top there. So we have G panel, panel one is equal to panel one. So because panel one returns a J panel, we just initialize it to a J panel. And then we do the same for panel two up to six. And then we set a layout, which is a box layout. Um, y axis and then we add we add our first panel and then with the box layout we can set our vertical struts so the vert vertical struts is what you see here um this horizontal vertical struts is what you see here so that that's 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 ten so we do all for up to the set panel the vertical strut and then when we get to the action perform since it implements an action is now we need to have a default an implemented method action performed comes into play so we place this into a try and catch block you can see the try here and then we so if event does get action command equals one you see uh, at the top um above this we create a reset our action command so now we are getting our action command so if event was to get action command equals one i'm going to set a temporary value equals to text we are going to get a text from the text box the text will then add one to it and then we'll set the text field to the temporary value so we do the same here, 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 up to um, up to zero, and then when we get our action command, which is plus, we take the first number from the text field. But since we are using, since this is of double, we need to pass it from the text field into the a double, and then since. Um, the action command equals plus we have our operation plus here we do the same for the minus we do the same for the division we do the same for the multiplication we do the same for the plus and minus we are just if the value in the plus if the value in the text field is um, a minus make it plus if the value is plus we make it minus so you can see here that double ops is equal to double dot plus double txt but get text and then we make we multiply the ops by minus one and then we set it to the text field we do the same for dots like what we did previously at the top and for the clear we just set it to a blank string so that is really thing so after all is done we need it's left to the equal to sign you can see that i didn't mention the equal to sign anywhere here 
here. So this is what equal to sign does. We take a decimal format and then we take our second number. So we take our answer, we initialize a double variable answer to zero so that we don't get any error. And then we check if operation is equal to pass. So now we already called our operation. We already declared our operations. So if it gets down here and we find out that operation is equal to plus, we add the first two numbers. If it's equal to minus, we add the we subtract number we subtract um second number from the first number. If it's equal to multiplication, we multiply the first number by the second number. If it's equal to division, we divide the first number by the second number. And then we use a decimal format to change how uh, answer is gonna look like. So this one is just like um, it takes this decimal format. Just gonna take um, and a couple of numbers after the decimal place. So that's what you see here. We can restrict it to let's say two numbers or a number so after we're done with that we set it to the text field and that, that that's that's where you get your answer display so this part we catch errors that are associated with inputs or general errors and then once we're done we create another class calculator main that's where we're going to have our main method to be able to run our calculator so this is very necessary we need to include so yeah we create an instance of my calculator class you can either write new cal my calculator or you can write calculator no my calculator calc is equals to new my calculator And then you just and then and then you're done. But this is the easiest way. This is the best way to write. Since we have already set our visible in our default set operation, default close operation. So we just need to create this instance and then we're done. So let's run our calculator already open. So twelve plus seventy eight. 90 clear sets my text field to blank um, 8.7 8 plus 9.6 equals to okay it's so equals c um uh, what again what again should i calculate uh, 9 divided by 6 equals so you can see that our computer is working perfectly. And that's all for this tutorial. Um, if you have any questions, you can comment below. Um, so make sure you subscribe for more videos like this. Wow, it's about to rain. You gotta get going. So I'm gonna see you guys soon. Bye bye.